Okay, we move on to powders. I've kind of divided powders into four categories. So we have pressed setting powders, then we're gonna talk about loose setting powders. We're gonna talk about powder foundations. I have a few of those. And then we're gonna talk about finishing powders. I'm gonna talk about how those I see is a little bit different than some of the other powders we're talking about now. Um, this is an essence. This is something I've been testing. This is a mattifying powder. It says color correcting. It has kind of a beige, purple, and green. Uh, you can see that tones in the powder itself. It feels very lightweight, but I also think it looks a little powdery on the skin. So I do think I'm gonna pass this one along. This is the Physician's Formula. This is their Mineral Wear Talc Free uh, Powder in Translucent. It also has a similar like swirl pattern to it with um, sort of greens and pinks and yellows. This is incredibly brightening. It's very white, as you can see. It's gonna be hard for me to swatch these for you guys, but I'm gonna try. Um, this is very brightening. I really like this. It's talc free, so it's not drying. I really like this as an under eye setting powder with a little brush. Um, I think it does a lot of bright, it has a lot of brightening uh, capacity on my very fair skin. So I like this one. I'm gonna hang on to it. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus powder where I didn't care for the foundation. I did like the powder. Yes, yeah, so this is a talc silica um, boron nitrate nylon 12 formula. So while this has talc number one, this is not gonna be the most mattifying powder out there. And because it has silica number two, it's gonna give you that sort of silky feel to the skin and it's gonna be a very invisible powder uh, for setting. This is my favorite kind of setting powders, these very invisible, slightly blurring formulas. I do like this one. I think it is a good value at the drugstore and I do wanna keep it. This is the fit me. Everybody talks about the matte and poreless. This is the set and smooth one. This is incredibly smoothing powder. It's incredibly silky. Uh, let's see if I can find the ingredients. Yeah, so it's got talc, but then it has synthetic fluoris. I'm going to put it on the screen. Okay, this is just an incredibly buttery feeling formula. You could put pounds of this on your face and it would not show up. Um, I really do love, 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 love this powder. Um, it does have a little puff and a mirror on the backside, so it's not too bad for travel. This is one I, I would definitely consider popping in my purse, but keeping it. Let me jump back here because this is what is in my purse. This is the Maybelline um, Superstay Better Skin. This is not translucent. This is going to have a little bit of color to it. This is in the shade Porcelain, number 10. It has this little sponge on one side, a giant mirror, and then the powder on this side. It feels very similar, in all honesty, to this Fit Me powder. Um, the Better Skin has salicylic acid in it, though. Um, that's probably the primary difference between the two of them. So once again, it's got a BHA in it. This is one that gives you light coverage. Um, I really like this for touch-ups. Like if I have, if I'm getting shiny in places, I will blot and then put a little bit of this on. Um, or if I need a little bit more coverage in certain areas, this will also give me some light coverage. So this is what stays in my purse and I really like this powder. I think it's really, really well done. This is the Wet n Wild Coverall Pressed Compact. This is talc mica nylon. It's gonna be very similar to some of the ones we've talked about already. It has a very silky feel to it from that nylon. This definitely has some coverage to it. So this is not gonna be a translucent powder. Um, it's not bad, and for the price point, if you're looking for a really cheap product that you can toss in your purse or you just don't want to spend up on a pressed powder, I totally get it. Um, this is a good one, but I think it is comparable to the Fit Me uh, powder that I already just kept. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this guy. It's tougher to get your hands on this powder. This is the Age Defying by Revlon. This is an interesting powder. Um, it has talc and then it has dimethicone as its second ingredient and then zinc stearate, which is a kind of also smoothing primer. This one they claim is an ultra fine powder plus anti-aging skincare. Oh, well, there's a peptide in here. Okay, hexapeptide number eight as well as some fruit extracts. So, okay, I can get behind that. Um, this, although it is talc based, is also very, oh my gosh, it's so 
buttery and smooth. This is one of those ones that you put it on your skin, it doesn't look powdery, and yet it manages to like smooth and blur, and I think it's because of the dimethicone in it. I really like this powder. I'm gonna keep it. This is the traditional Rimmel Stay Matte. This is a talc mica combination. I always look at the first two ingredients on powders because that's probably the bulk of the ingredients. Um, this one is definitely, uh, it's one of those mattifying powders that doesn't show up. So I like this for days when I'm feeling a little oily or I'm struggling with oil because it handles the oil without ever looking powdery. So this is an incredible value. This is creamy natural. Um, this is not uh, necessarily a um, translucent powder, but it's so lightweight that it might as well be. Um, I really love this. So keeping that, I'm not doing very well here. That's okay, I have a lot of pressed powders that I actually enjoy. Let's talk about those, let's talk about these first. So this is a Bare Minerals, this is the Perfecting Veil in a pressed format. I do not remember what is in this, to be totally honest. I've had this for a while, it's just okay. It doesn't have that same creaminess that the other powders have. I don't know, it's just not my favorite powder, to be totally honest. I think I'm gonna pass this one along. This is from e.l.f. This is their new finishing powder. Oh, this is a finishing powder. Hmm, I don't think I agree with that. Let's keep going. This is in the shade Fair Light. Um, this is part of their Beautifully Bare line. It pops up and has a little spongy thing. It's got a mirror up in the top, which is great. Um, and then it's got this powder down here um, that is also very um, emollient, very smooth feeling. Um, it's gonna give you a little bit of coverage, but not a ton. It is very smoothing. I like this powder. Um, I really do. I think this is a good drugstore option. All right, let's talk about these two because these are more glowy. So this is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Light. I've used the heck out of this. I love this powder. It is very fair. These two powders in particular, if you've been looking for a glowy finish and you want to set your makeup, but you don't want to lose that glow. These are the two that I would recommend. So this is the MAC one, and one that I think is really similar from the drugstore is the Milani Prep Set and Glow. This came out in the spring. This is their Illuminating Translucent Powder. This is just gorgeous, and I think it does the same thing um, as the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. I almost think these are dupes for one another. Huh, this also has a fruit cell culture extract. So this actually has and salicylic acid. Wow, and glycerin, holy crap, the ingredients on this are really good. If you get, um, I am quite impressed with this. Um, you know what, now that I think about it, a lot of the, the anti-aging benefits that are in this Revlon are in this one from Milani, and I like this Milani one better, so as much as I think this is a really cool product, I actually think I'm gonna keep the Milani and go ahead and pass this Revlon one on us because now that I look at the ingredients, my reasons for keeping this are duplicated in here. Yeah, I'm gonna pass this one on and keep this one. And this MAC one is not going anywhere either. I have a lot of loose setting powders and I really would make, like to make kind of a dent in this, to be totally honest, because there's definitely ones that I reach for in favor of other ones on here. Let's start in this back row and we'll work our way across. So this is my favorite setting powder um, that I've tried to date. This is the perfect setting powder from Cover FX. It is a talc-free formula. I love this underneath my eyes. It has silica in it, but it's not the number one ingredient. It also has some skincare benefits to it. I find that this is one of the few powders that I can put under my eyes that doesn't dry my under eyes out. Um, and then it also, if you put it all over your skin, has a really nice blurring effect as well. Um, really helps makeup last all day and then blurs the skin I will not be parted from this whatsoever. I love this stuff. Just to jump around a little bit on you, if you're not going to want to spend the money on a Cover FX powder, I have a couple of drugstore recommendations that I immediately gravitate towards. One is this Boots powder. This does have talc as its first ingredient, but it also has nylon and then a couple of dimethicone ingredients um, in here that give it a real nice slip to it. Um, and then this also does not have silica, so it's not gonna cause any flashback. This also has vitamin E and hyaluronic acid in there. So hyaluronic acid is great for dry or dehydrated skin. Our under eye areas tend to be our most dry. So this does a nice job, even though it has talc as a number one ingredient, which can be drying, um, this has enough 
um, kind of dimethicone slipping ingredients as well as that hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. I think it plays really well under dry, under my eyes and doesn't dry them out. So this would be my probably number one drugstore recommendation and one that I'm definitely going to keep. This is from Boots number seven. I don't think I even said that. And this is their Perfect Light Loose Powder in Translucent. Um, it is drugstore, which means the packaging, while pretty, it doesn't have any sort of sifter. So traveling with this one can be a bit of a pain because all the powder tends to pop out. The Cover FX one is much better designed. It has a stopper in here that can lift out. So it definitely keeps your powder in place while traveling. So this is definitely a prefer travel powder. If you're looking for a travel powder from the drugstore, the other one I'd recommend for setting underneath your eyes is actually this e.l.f. one. This is their e.l.f. HD Under Eye Setting Powder. It's a tiny little container, but it's three bucks. It has some talc in it, but the talc is much further down on the ingredient list. It has vitamin C, which is actually proven for helping dark circles. So this actually has vitamin C and K in it. Um, and then its primary ingredients are actually some dimethicone kind of uh, dimethicone cross polymer ingredients as well as mica, which tends to be a little bit illuminating. I have heard some people complain that the mica in here um, will show up on their skin and they feel like they see glitter particles underneath their eye. I've used this quite a bit. I don't know if the batching was different. I've never noticed any sort of glitter particles and I'm highly, highly sensitive to glitter particles, but just know there is mica in here and depending on how finely milled the mica is, it can do glitter particles. So perhaps there was a batch where the mica wasn't ground up as effectively as other batches, but sorry, ran out of battery juice. We'll keep going here. This, um, like I said, I really like it. Would buy this again, recommend it highly. This is the RCMA No Color Powder made popular by Kathleen Lights and then YouTube World stampeded after this thing. It's in a season shaker, which everybody complains about. This is literally two ingredients. I don't know if you can read that. It is talc and it is silica. It is, I don't know what percent talc to silica it is. It's fine, it's okay. But it is not, in my opinion, this like end all be all powder that everybody freaks out over. I don't love the packaging. It's affordable, but I don't love this. And I think I'm actually gonna declutter it. All right, let's look at this one. This is the Maybelline Master, let's see, this is the Maybelline Master Fix this is their setting and perfecting loose powder. This is a talc silica dimethicone blend. So to be honest, if you are interested in trying out the no RCMA no color powder, this Maybelline face powder in a much nicer container is at the drugstore, easily available. Just go buy this. That's my opinion. I, like I said, I'm getting rid of this. I'm also getting rid of this. They just didn't wow me. Okay, this is a powder that I feel like everyone should have something like this in their collection because I do think it is a really good powder. This is listed as a finishing powder. However, I think you can also use this one to set your makeup. This is 100% silica. So this is going to be the most finely milled, silky formula you will have ever touched your fingers to. It, it, it literally feels like you are rubbing something liquid between your fingers when you um, rub it. This is also incredibly blurring. This is also what gives you flashback. Now, here's the thing about flashback. How much freaking flash photography do you take? In real life, you are never gonna see this powder no matter how much you put on. Yes, you can see it in flashback photography, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not doing much flash photography. I don't know about you. So would I wear this to a wedding where I was gonna be photographed? No. Would I wear this every day to the office to blur the absolute crap out of my skin and make my pores completely disappear? Absolutely. Um, I've used this powder in two ways. I have used this to set my makeup um, before I move on. I have also used this as a final step once I've done all my other face products, including setting powder and brush and bronzer and all of that, I will go back in and do a very light dusting of this all over my skin. There is a Makeup Forever and expensive powder that's 100% silica. I would argue the container that it comes in is better, but the ingredient is exactly the same as this NYX one. So if you've been interested in trying out a silica product, um, give this one a whirl. This is an e.l.f. Soft Luminance Powder. I hate the container on this, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it comes with a puff. This, I can't remember, this has a lot more mica in it and you get a lot more shimmery particles on your skin. 
Uh, I see a lot of shimmer particles. This probably isn't picking up on camera, but I see a lot of shimmer particles on this. It feels finely milled. I just am never reaching for this. So this one is bulky and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna declutter it. Let's talk some bare minerals stuff. This is a mineral veil. So I have a hydrating mineral veil which has silica, water, silica silicate, rice lipid. So this one is gonna be a lot more smoothing. And ironically, it's kind of a darker color than the original mineral veil is. This is the illuminating mineral veil that has cornstarch and zinc stearate and then mica and mica is giving it that shimmery look as well this one is incredibly illuminating and is in my opinion it's just way too glittery i don't know if you can see that um this one is interesting it feels very finely milled i do like it i don't necessarily think it is super hydrating um but it does have a strange I'll try and zoom you in and see if we can get this um so this is the illuminating one here and you can hopefully see the glitter particles. The one next to it, honestly, has almost a pink shift in that hydrating one that is really, really interesting. And then last but not least, this is a Diamond Light Mineral Finishing Powder. Once again, I could have put this in the finishing powder category. This is very similar to the Illuminating, but it's got a pinker tone, and it's just, it's chunky glitter. It's chunky glitter all over the face. So I am gonna declutter both of these Illuminating mineral veils from Bare Minerals. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep the hydrating one though and see if I get some use out of it and see if I see how I feel about it. This is a Laura Murphy, Mercier translucent setting powder. This one dries my under eyes out. I know this is everyone's holy grail powder. It is a talc based powder. It has talc number one. I don't know. I feel like I want to keep this for comparison's sake. I feel like every time I've used this on my skin it's ended up looking too matte and too um, drying on me. This is a talc uh, Z-Maze cornstarch blend. Um, I know a lot of people raved about this powder. Um, it has incredible reviews on the Ulta website. It is going out of stock, unfortunately. To me, this is almost like a cheaper version slash dupe of the Laura Mercier powder. I just never really I never really fell in love with it, to be totally honest. So I think if you have more oily skin, these two kinds of powders you may prefer. Um, it has been a hot minute since I've used the Laura Mercier, so I do think I'm gonna keep it and play around with it. I'm gonna pass this one on from Fiona Styles. For my powder foundations, this is the original Bare Minerals in Fairly Light. I wore this exclusively for years and years. I've gone through dozens of containers of this. There's not much left in here, to be totally honest. Yeah, I think I'm gonna declutter this one. It's just old. Should have been in my bronzer collection and it got buried into my powders because it was in a Bare Minerals container. This is the warmth. This was honestly my first bronzer and I used this religiously every day for a thousand years. It's not bad, but I now have bronzers I like much better that are less orangey on me. So I'm also going to pass this guy along. This I really like. This is the Laura Geller Baked and Baked Balance and Brighten in the shade Fair. This is probably my favorite powder foundation. I will wear this on days where I just want a light coverage. Um, I don't feel like this ever gets like powdery or cakey on me. I will also use this to set my face if I need more coverage than I got from my foundation for a particular reason. So this is probably my favorite powder foundation. So definitely keeping that. So I also have the It Cosmetics um, this is their original Celebration Foundation in medium beige. And then I also have this Celebration Foundation Illumination in fair. Um, this one is definitely more powdery than, than this one. This one's a stiffer formula. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep the Illumination version. It definitely is illuminating even more so than that um, Laura Geller one. Uh, I think I'm gonna pass the original one on. These are finishing powders. So can you use these to set your under eyes and your face? Sure. Um, their intended purpose for in all of these is to go on as a last step to either add a little bit more mattification or a little more glow um, and kind of give your skin that kind of um, photoshopped feel. Let's start down here with my hourglass ones. So I own two hourglass products. Um, one is the uh, dim light, in, it's the ambient lighting palette. Um, you can pick this up at Sephora. It has uh, dim light, incandescent light, 
and Radiant Light. Dim Light is a beautiful powder. These feel so freaking silky on the skin. Um, it gives you a really natural glow. None of these are gonna show up. Incandescent Light is probably one that's more like their version of a highlighter. Um, I do wear this either mixed together with these or I can even wear this on its own as a very subtle highlight. And then this one has a similar amount of shimmer but is deeper and actually looks really pretty as a bronze topper or really as a really subtle bronzer. Um, so I really like this palette. Um, if I were to buy them all over again, would I buy this palette or the individuals? I'd probably buy the individuals of Dim Light because this is what I find myself reaching for more than these two. I do use them, but mostly because I own them, not because I love them. This is Mood Light. This is probably my favorite um, finishing powder from Hourglass, and it has a slight pinky tone to it. Um, this is one of those ones that I love all over my face when my skin is just looking really dull. I think if you have cool undertones, this is a beautiful, beautiful finishing powder at the very end um, after you've applied all your makeup just to do a light dusting all over your face. Um, I also have found when my skin's a little drier, um, I will use this to set my face, either one of these powders, Dim Light or Mood Light. Those are my two favorite from their line that I've tried, so I love these. These are not going anywhere. All right, I do want to talk quickly about this. This is the Makeup Revolution Strobe Highlighter in the shade Moon Glow Lights. This, in my mind, is almost too subtle to be a highlighter. You could certainly wear it as such, but what I found is that it is almost a straight dupe for the effect that I get from Mood Light. And I think they have a similar even feel and consistency. Like this is incredibly silky. So in my mind, um, these two are dupes. You've been interested in trying out Hourglass Moonlight, sorry, Mood Light from Hourglass. I would totally recommend picking up this Makeup Revolution one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dupe this then declutter it is what I'm gonna do. All right, let's look at this. This is a Bare Minerals um, Translucent Powder Duo. I've had this for a little while. I actually just got another one of these in a recent BoxyCharm. So I think a lot of you guys who are watching this may have played around with this by now. So it comes with two powders. One is matte, one is glow. The matte powder is incredibly silky feeling. And then the glow is like this really pretty white marbly uh, one. You could definitely use it as an all over glowy powder, but it's gonna be pretty glowy. This might almost be better as a highlighter. I do like this though. I like that it comes with a matte and a glow option. I like that you could potentially mix them together. So yeah, I'm not I'm not getting rid of this one. I do like this one. This is new to me. This is a hard candy color correcting finishing powder. This is in the shade Fair to Light. I think they had a deeper one if I remember correctly. This is really freaking silky and really freaking brightening. Like this one gives a really solid glow to the skin, and to be honest, you could almost use it as a highlighter. In fact, this might be a highlighter dupe MAC highlighter that is kind of multi-toned like this. This may be a dupe for that, but this is a really underrated $5 product. I think you can get this just exclusively at Walmart, but I was incredibly impressed with this one, and I do wanna hang on to it. Last but not least, this is an e.l.f. product. This is their um, skin balancing, these are little kind of like their dupe of the Guerlain Meteorites. It comes with a puff, which I actually do like using to apply because I think it does a good job of picking up lots of the colors. But now that I'm looking at this, I haven't had this very long. I've played around with it a little bit, but now that I pat this on my skin, I am seeing quite a lot of glitter shimmer particles. So I'm not a fan of bigger glitter particles all over my skin, and I'm seeing that with this one. So I'm a little bummed. I didn't think I noticed this the first time I tried it, but that is pretty apparent now that I'm sitting here looking at it. So I think I'm gonna pass this one along. All right, here are the powders I'm keeping. I am keeping 20 powders, um, different finishes, different formats. These are all powders that I love and I reach for. So I am happy with the collection here. I'm getting rid of 15. So that means I've gotten rid of about 43% of my powders. So I think that is good. Yeah, so that is powders. Let's move on to concealers. Okay, so here are all of my concealers. Let's start down here. So these I would consider to be less about heavy concealing and more about illuminating. So this is the Magic Lumi from L'Oreal. This is in the shade Fair Clear. 
yeah, fair. Um, this is not gonna give you a ton of coverage, but it is pinkier toned, and it is good for highlighting parts of your face. This is not one that goes, in my opinion, underneath your eyes. It is one where you want to highlight your cheekbones or the bridge of your nose or your chin or your forehead. That is what this is for. Similarly, this is the Wet n Wild Highlighting and Concealing Pen. This is in the shade Ivory Into You. This one I used quite a bit and I tried to, I almost used it as a concealer, um, but as you can see, it is starting to go bad. There's not much left in here either. So I'm gonna declutter this guy. It's not bad. I would say this is a more of a lightweight concealer and if it's on me, it's not as brightening as the L'Oreal one. So um, gonna declutter that one. And then the last illuminating thing that I have is the, from Julep, this is their Face and Eye Brightener in the shade Rise and Shine. This one is more, even more pinky toned. If I'm being totally honest, I don't think I need both of these. I don't use them a ton. I think I'm gonna get rid of the Julep one and I'm gonna keep the L'Oreal one. All right, let's talk a few higher end concealers from Sephora. Um, I guess you get this Ulta too. This is the Bare Minerals Bare Skin. This is in the shade Fair. Um, this is, I would say, a lightweight medium coverage. I wish it was a little bit brighter, lighter color, but it's okay. It's not bad on me. I would say this is a solid medium coverage. Uh, not super drying though. Um, not my favorite concealer in this category, um, but not awful. Um, I do like it. This is a Sephora Bright Future Gel Serum. This is the Sephora Collection version in their lightest shade, Bavarian Cream. This one is very, very whitening. I don't mind the formula. I've heard it compared to the NARS, but to be honest, I don't reach for this a ton. Um, it's getting a little older. I think I'm gonna declutter it. This is the Kat Von D Locket Concealer Cream in the shade L3 Warm. I was really sadly disappointed by this. Not by the coverage. It's super, super good coverage, um, but this one just really dried out my under eyes and emphasized, emphasized every line and detail, every line underneath my skin. So I'm gonna pass on this guy, just not a fan. This is the new Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer. I'm sitting here trying to remember what I think about this. I mean, it feels like it might be a little drying. I don't know, I'm gonna keep this one and play around with it. I can't remember what I think about it, to be totally honest. Uh, oh, I'm keeping the Bare Minerals as well. This is Maybelline Fit Me in shade 15 Claire, ironically, or fair. Ironically, shade 10 is darker than shade 15. I can't explain this one. This one's not bad. Um, it's okay. It's just, it's not my favorite. I know it's a lot of people's holy grail favorite. It's a medium coverage, and I think I have other medium coverage concealers that I like more than this. Um, so I'm gonna pass these two. This is the Milani um, Light lifting concealer. I really like this. I hate this sponge tip applicator. I like the one on the Maybelline one. We'll get that, that in a minute. This is one of those really nice sort of hydrating and illuminating ones that I think is good if you're dealing with any sort of fine lines underneath the eyes. I wish they made one that was slightly lighter than this. This is very close to my skin tone, so I'm not getting a lot of brightening effect when I use this, but I do like it, and I don't always go for a super bright under eye. Um, similarly, this is the Age Rewind um, from Maybelline. Everybody talks about this is also in Fair. I've gone through so many tubes of this. I can't even, I'm mad, I can't even count. This one is a little bit more brightening, as you can see, a little bit more pink toned, a little bit more brightening than the Milani one, but similar coverage levels. So if you like this one, um, but you've struggled a little bit because they haven't had a shade that worked for you, uh, maybe check out the Milani, although I will tell you if you're fair like me, the fair shade in the Maybelline is still going to be a better option for you than the Milani one. But I do like these both and I wanna keep them. Tarte Shape Tape, everybody freaking talks about. I bought the shade Light initially when they had a more limited shade range. This is still very lightening and brightening on my skin tone. I found that the fair was too white on me, to be honest. I did go out and buy fair beige when they came out with a few other shades. This is probably the lightest concealer that I own. It is very brightening on my under eyes and I really have to be careful to blend this into my skin or it looks like I have what I call reverse raccoon eyes. I use this under my eyes. I use the shade light to um, 
do spot correction on my face. This is everything that everybody talks about. I'm not going to like be a broken record here, but this is one of the best, if not the best, foundation or concealer on the market right now. I will probably always keep these two shades in my collection. This is one that I don't think anybody talks about. It just came out from Julep. It's their Cushion Complexer 5-in-1. Um, this is in the shade 100 Alabaster. Um, it has a similar kind of foam tip applicator. Um, it is also very light. It's kind of like the fair shade from um, Tarte. I think this is a pretty decent dupe to the Tarte Shape Tape, to be honest. I think it gives a similar finish. Um, it's a little more affordable. Um, I don't think that people are talking about this one. It just came out and I don't think Julep gets a lot of hype, but I would put this right up there with my Tarte Shape Tape as far as coverage, how it wears on my eyes, how it doesn't crease, um, and how it plays nicely with fine lines and wrinkles. So. I love this. I am not parting with this. Uh, let's talk about these three here. This is from e.l.f. This is the shade Fair. This is in their Studio HD line. I've tried all the e.l.f. concealers. Um, this one is way too dark for me, as you can see, especially compared to those alabaster shades. So I am gonna part with this one. I don't feel like I was able to give it a fair shake just because their lightest shade is so freaking medium. I can't give you a proper feedback on this. I put this on and I had to wipe it off immediately. This is the Match Perfection. I love the foundation. I actually really like the concealer. This is 125 Fair Claire. It's brightening because it's got a little bit of a yellow tone to it, but it's definitely one of my darker concealers. It's not even as fair as the light shade from Tarte, but I do like this one. It's a very peachy color. So I like putting this on when I'm not looking for a super brightening effect, but I'm dealing with dark circles. I feel like this combats because it's got that peachier undertone and it's close to my skin tone. It really just neutralizes my under eye without doing a whole lot of brightening. And then I'll sometimes go over the top of this with a more brightening powder to add a little bit of that lightening effect. I really like this, keeping that. This is the Maybelline Superstay Better Skin in 10. This is one I haven't used in a while. This is number 10 Ivory. It's not a bad shade. It's more yellow based. So that's that Rimmel one. You can see it's more peachy. This is definitely more yellow. I think I'm gonna keep this one and try it. I'm not gonna lie. I hate to get rid of these two because when I declutter them, if I don't like them, they're just, I can't pass them on to anybody, right? So like they're going in the trash. And if I don't like something or it's the wrong color, fine. But if it looks like it's something that could work, I, I kind of want to hang on to it and try and use it up. This is from Wet n Wild. This is the Come Correct in Fair Claire. A little goes a long way and it gets very sticky, but it is full flippin' coverage. So if you wanted to try the uh, It Cosmetics um, Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer, but you just didn't want to pull the trigger because you weren't sure if you're going to like that kind of formula. I would fancy trying the cover, uh, the Wet n Wild one. It's a couple bucks and it'll give you a sense for if you like that really full coverage, um, kind of sticky feeling um, concealer where you need just the tiniest bit to get uh, full coverage there. So. Um, me personally, I'm not a fan of these. I'm not a fan of the It Cosmetics one. I've tried it. I'm not a fan of this one, um, but I know a lot of people are. So I can't knock this product. It's just not my cup of tea. Okay, this caught me off guard how much I liked it. So this is the Wet n Wild Mega Cushion. This is in the shade Peach. This is one of their color correcting cushions. So it looks in here like it would be a very peach color corrector. I would argue that the sponge is peach because when I use this, this looks like a very light concealer. This is a secretly awesome medium coverage concealer at the drugstore for fair skinned people. I really like this thing. Um, I think it is completely amazing. I just don't think it's a color corrector. I think it is a concealer for fair skin. So if you have fair skin like me, go pick this up. It's a couple bucks. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. This is the one stick found or stick concealer that I own. This is from Revlon. This is their photo focus line. I've used the heck out of this. This is what I use for spot concealing on my face. I like a thicker, creamier um, stick foundation for concealing. This is very close to my skin color. Um, blends in really effortlessly, never looks cakey. I really enjoyed it. I think I'm on my third or fourth tube of this since I've discovered it. Um, but I use this, like I said, spot conceal any blemishes or sunspots on my face. Two peach correctors. One is from Pixie and it is their Brightening Peach. And then I have Fiona Styles Peach Corrector. 
which is a little bit lighter. Pixie one, I would argue, is a little creamier, a little more emollient, and the Fiona Styles one is a little bit more, um, it's a little bit deeper. And this one's a little bit more apricot, and this one's a little more pinky peach, if that makes sense. I actually like both of these. I will probably continue to use them up. Um, as far as peach correctors go, I think they do their job. I apply this in the corner of my eye before concealer um, when I have really dark circles, but it's not a product I reach for every single day. This is the Fiona Styles um, full, con full cover perfect finish concealer in the shade 0102. So this is her lightest one. I actually love this one. I think it is emollient, but gives really good coverage, but it's not so emollient that it creases like crazy. Uh, it blends out like a dream. The color's really good for me. I use this a lot. I will typically um, either, I will dip in with my finger and pat it in and then use a beauty blender to kind of do a finishing smooth or I'll put it on with a concealer brush and blend it out. Either way works really well. I don't find that this is super drying on my under eyes. So I really, really, really like this. I think this is another concealer that didn't get enough love. Uh, unfortunately, it's gonna be harder to find now that Ulta isn't carrying Fiona Styles anymore. And then this is the Glossier Stretch Concealer. This is my most hydrating concealer. This is in the shade Light Claire. This is incredibly emollient almost a little oily feeling. Um, and I mean that in a good way, like a facial oil kind of way. So if you have really, um, really dry under eyes, I skip everything I've just talked about, just go buy this. Um, it's very lightweight. Um, it gives a medium coverage, but I think it does a nice job of covering some darkness. I think this paired with a little bit of a peach corrector would be give you all the coverage you probably want unless you're really struggling. In the winter time, especially when my eyes are dry, um, this is what I am reaching for because I really do appreciate how hydrating it is. This is one that will settle into settle into lines, so you are gonna wanna lightly set this um, and you're not gonna wanna apply too, too much or you will have creasing problems. But like I said, if you've struggled with dry under eyes, give this a shot. I think you will be shocked at um, the results. All right, so here's what I'm getting rid of, getting rid of nine, keeping 15. So um, getting rid of about 38%, um, but I feel okay about this. I did go ahead and move this uh, Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer over here. I did just play around with it a little bit in the other room and I didn't care for how it looked. It looked a little cakey. Um, so this one was not a winner for me, to be totally honest. So I did move it to the declutter pile, but these are all ones that I like and reach for and have, I think, specific purposes in my collection um, based on what's going on underneath my other eye, under eyes or the coverage level of coverage that I want. Um, so yeah, feeling pretty good about that. So that takes us through all of face products. Oh my God, are you still with me? How many minutes is this video? I don't know. It's going to be obnoxiously long. If you have made it through, all the way to the end, you rock. Thank you so much. If you like these kinds of videos, make sure to check out my playlist down below. We've been decluttering the world here lately, and we've got a few more categories to go yet still, so look forward to those in the future. Um, if you want to make sure not to miss any of those videos, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, liking lets me know that you guys like these kinds of videos, and then obviously subscribing will make sure you don't miss any future videos as they come out. Hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,